Well, good morning. Are you ready to start math? All right, well, let's get our math books out and let's turn to page 53. There's a story here. Remember our characters here, Charlie and Charlotte? Remember? All right, so I'm gonna read this story to you. Look at all these, this big pile of leaves. Do you have your page out yet on page 53? Make sure you get your math book out. Do the trees in your area where you live, are they starting to look like this a little bit? Yeah, you know what season that is, right? Fall, or the other word for it is autumn. All right, I'm gonna read. Now you make sure and follow along. As Charlie and Charlotte turned the calendar, they were excited to see that it was now October. The days were definitely shorter and it was getting cooler. The autumn leaves were vibrant with color and many leaves had dropped off the trees and were, as the twins discovered, great fun to play in. Anne and Andy enjoyed romping in the leaf piles as much as both twins did. Pokey really enjoyed basking in the sun on his rock on the sunny autumn days. Mom, asked Charlotte as they were out on another fall stroll, why do leaves change color? Well, replied Mom, as the days are getting shorter, there's less sunlight. The leaves need lots of sunlight to make their food. In the fall, due to shorter periods of daylight and cooler temperatures, the leaves stop their food making process. In their cells, there's a pigment called chlorophyll, which gives the leaf its green color. Since the chlorophyll gets its energy from sunlight and aids the leaf in the food making process, and we now have less sunlight, the chlorophyll breaks down and the green color disappears, exposing colors of yellow, orange, and red in the fall. That is another wonderful pattern in nature, isn't it, Mom? asked Charlotte. It sure is, dear, replied Mom. And now, do you children want to each pick 10 of the most beautiful leaves you can find to do a project with later on? Yay, yippee, another project, exclaimed the very enthusiastic children. All right, so we now learn how why the leaves change colors, because the sunlight helps them make chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is what makes the food, and when there's less sunlight, they don't make food and the chlorophyll stops making the leaves green and it lets all those different colors come out. All right, well, let's look at our first page. Can you turn to this page right here? Page 54. Now it says the twins, do you have a pencil? Make sure you have a pencil close by, okay? The twins are learning that sometimes there are math equations in life around them. For example, they know that their family has four members right now, and when their baby sister is born, there will be one more. They learned how many members their family will have all together by adding four and one to find five. This kind of math problem is called a word or story problem. It's important to know how to solve word problems. When you have, know how to solve them, you can have fun finding and solving problems all around you. Now, right here, are you on this page right here on page 54? All right, we're gonna look at, there's five things that we have to know in order to solve a word problem. Are you ready? So the first one is we have to read the problem very carefully. Sometimes you have to read it more than one time in order to figure out what it is they're wanting you to know. And once you've read the problem and you understand it, then you say, what's the question? You find out what they're asking you because all story problems ask you questions. And then the third thing is you circle the numbers that you'll need to use to solve the problem. So then you go back and you circle all the numbers that you're gonna need. The fourth thing you do is you have to think it through. That means, are you gonna need to add or subtract? There are key words or clue words that'll tell you what you need to do. <clears throat> if your word problem has the words all together, do you see these words right here? If your word problem says all together, then you know you have to add because adding will tell you what everything together is. If your word problem has the words, what is the difference? You know you'll need to subtract because subtracting tells you how much more or less one number is than another. 
You need to underline those words when you come across those in a word problem. Did you know that doing a word problem is like solving a puzzle? It's like you got to have found all the clues in the word problem in order to solve it. The last step that you have to do is you have to look at the answer that you got and see if your answer makes sense. Sometimes they don't make sense, and if they don't, that means we have to go back and fix it. Now, just like everything else in life, learning to solve word problems takes a lot of practice. So we're going to start by working it out in steps. All right? Now, if you need to use a, some counters, some beans or something, you can do that, okay? All right, let's look at this word problem number one. Now, we have to remember our steps of doing a word problem. After the twins cleaned up their room, they counted their toys. Charlie had four toy trucks and Charlotte had three dolls. How many toys did the children have all together? Fill in the numbers and solve the problem. Now, what we have to do is we have to go back here. It says, read the problem carefully. All right, we just read it. They cleaned their room. They counted their toys. Charlie had four toy trucks. Charlotte had three dolls. How many toys did they have all together? Then it says, we have to ask, what's the question? Let's see. How many toys did the children have all together? That's our question. Remember that? All right. Then it says, I'm going to change my color right here right quick. Okay. And then it says, after we read it carefully and we find the question, then it says, circle the numbers that you're going to have to use in the problem. Okay. Let's see. So he had four toy trucks. It wants to know how many toys there were. So we're going to circle four toy trucks. Make sure you circle the four. And then Charlotte had three dolls. We have to circle because it wants to know how many toys there were. So we have to circle the numbers of the toys. Okay. Then after we do that, we have to think through it. Do we need to add or subtract? Well, let's look for clue words. How many toys? How many? That's a clue. How many means to add, doesn't it? All right, so then let's take our numbers down here. So there were four trucks. Are you writing this down? And three dolls. So how many toys altogether did they have? Did you get seven? Seven toys altogether. All right, I bet that's what you got. Good job. All right, let's look at the next word problem. Now, remember our steps. The first thing we have to do is read through the problem. The twins were going to have a new baby sister soon. They were so excited to hold her and count her little fingers and toes. They knew that she would have five fingers on one hand and five more on the other tiny hand. How many tiny sweet baby fingers would their little sister have all together? Ooh, this is a big one. All right, so we just read it very carefully. Now, what's the next section that we do? Oh, now we have to find the question. All right, so how many, I'm going to underline the question. How many tiny sweet baby fingers would their little sister have all together? Okay, that's our question. Now, after we do that, we need to go back and circle the numbers that we're going to have to use. All right, so it wants to know about tiny fingers. Okay, so five fingers. There's one number on one hand and five more on the other. There's our other number. Okay, five more fingers. Okay, now we got to find the clue words. How many tiny sweet baby fingers would their little sister have all together? That's a clue word, a clue phrase. What does that mean? It means plus, because you're adding them together. So we're going to add these numbers up. So let's put our numbers right here. Five little fingers, and then five more little fingers on the other side. So how many fingers all together? Can you count? Did you get 10? Good. Five little fingers plus five more little fingers makes 10. Okay, let's look at word problem number three. Are we ready? The twins' mom had been carrying their baby sister all safe and warm inside of her for eight months. Now mom told
told them that she had one more month before the baby was due to be born. How many months all together would mom carry their baby sister? All right, so we just read it. Let's look for the question. How many months all together would mom carry their baby sister? Okay, so we're looking for months. So now let's see if we can find our I mean our numbers. Let's see, inside of eight months, we're looking for months, so there's eight. Okay, she had one more month, there's another. Okay, now we have to look for the clue words. How many months all, look there, all together. There's our clue word right there. Remember, all together means to add. It means addition. So let's put our numbers down here. Eight months plus one more month equals how many months altogether? What does that equal? Did you get nine months altogether? Very good, very good. Let's do the next word problem. See how we're finding clues? When the twins came home from their grandparents' farm, they discovered that dad had built an addition on their house. Before their house had contained eight rooms, they were excited to find out there were two more rooms, a nursery for the baby and a brand new beautiful school room just for them. How many rooms does their house have all together? Wow, that's a long one. All right, so we read the problem. They're getting, they, got, they came back and they found that there were two more rooms into their, in their house. So let's find the question. What's it asking us? How many rooms does their house have all together? Okay, so we're looking for rooms in the house. So let's find any numbers that talk about rooms in the house. Here's one, eight rooms. Let's circle eight. They were excited. There were two more rooms. Here's a, num a number that talks about rooms. Is that it? Yeah, okay. Now what we have to do is find our clue words. All together, that's our clue word. Remember, clue words tell us if either we have to add or subtract. All together means we have to add them all up, so that's addition. So let's put our numbers where they go. We have eight and a two. So put eight plus, then they got two more rooms. What's the answer? Can you figure it out? Did you get 10 rooms altogether? Good deal. Now, do you see how we followed the steps, the word problem steps for each one of these? Good, all right, well let's look at this page right here. This is gonna be page 56. Now, you get to do this page all by yourself. This is a review. And I'm gonna give you a grade on this page, okay? Now, remember what we do when we read clocks. You always look at the long hand and make sure it's on the 12. If it is, then you just find what number the little hand is on, and that is what a clock it is, okay? So I'd like for you to finish this page by yourself, and then I'm going to great it. When you're finished with it, I'm going to put your math facts up here and you make sure you click on that link and practice your math facts, okay? All right, that's all for today.